I think your first assignment in Dallas was to guard Marina Oswald and his relatives, his mother, his brother. You did, some, you did a lot of interviews, you met the family, did a lot of research. Tell us about Lee Harvey Oswald's background and his, a little bit about his childhood and the man he became. Well, when, when we uh, were assigned the investigation, uh, different agents would have different assignments, but all, all the files went into a pool and to the lawyers on the Warren Commission. And they would give you an assignment. I'd get a note in my box and say, here's what I want you to do. And you'd go interview that person. And uh, so uh, the history of Oswald was there, and I'd have access to that. And, and I read uh, the agency were going back and tracing his uh, whole life. So I had the good fortune of being able to read his psychiatric history, uh, his uh, personal history, everything about him. And then I had the uh, opportunity, uh, unfortunately, to meet his mother. Uh, his uh, wife, I spent a lot of time with Marina and uh, she was a very nice uh, young lady. His brother, Robert was vice president of Acme Brick Company and was just like any one of you. He had a wife and two lovely children, uh, was an executive, had a college degree, was uh, executive with Acme Brick Company, so he was perfectly normal. And, uh, and then uh, the witnesses, uh, we, uh, myself and Art Blake and a couple other uh, agents were assigned to the witnesses at the Texas School Book Depository. <coughs> And in those days, we didn't have tape recorders. Well, we did, but they were this big. <laughs> so we had to type interviews. So you had portable typewriters. You'd sit down with a witness and you'd listen to him. You'd type it. And I was popular among the agents because I'd been to law school for a year and, and did a lot of typing. So uh, we interviewed like 120 witnesses employees in the book depository, those on the street, and uh, then I, I mean, I don't know, I can't remember everybody I interviewed. I interviewed the three young men who were in the fifth floor immediately below Oswald when he fired the shots. Those were critical statements, uh, evidence in the case. Uh, I interviewed his landlady. Uh, you know, it's hard, actually hard for me to remember. I was surprised when I went back to examine the documents a few years ago when I was writing my book at some of the people I did interview. I'd forgotten about it. So I've, I was able to form a, a pretty good opinion based on Oswald's history. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, sticks out in my mind we were never able to find that in his entire life that he had a friend, not one friend. He went in the Marines when he was 17 and they made fun of him. He was bullied in school. Uh, in the Marines they made fun of him and uh, he, uh, he never, you know, when you're in the military, many of you here have been in the military, I still have a relationship with guys I was in the service with. We still get together. I mean, there's a bonding there with those guys that uh, last until death. And he didn't get along with one single person in the Marines. <laughs> All those guys were interviewed. They talked about him. They, they made fun of him. They called him Ozzy Rabbit. Uh, he was a weird looking sort of guy and, uh, and he didn't fit. And Marines are a bit macho. I don't know if you ever noticed. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they don't relate to a guy like uh, Lee Oswald. He didn't get kicked out of the Marines, but when he, he, he wanted out, and he got a, a discharge to support his mother. And then he, I believe he, uh, I don't know if he get, turned his citizenship, but he started studying Russian and, and declaring, oh, they would let him get out and support his mother if he'd stay in the active reserve. And then he started talking about going to Russia and uh, then the Marines gave him an undesirable discharge. 
something to remember. The Secretary of the Navy, at the time he was given that undesirable discharge, was John Connolly of Texas. So he, he never, in his entire life, never had, never really succeeded at a single thing that he ever did. And, and I think it's that failure lashing back at society that, uh, now the Warren Commission concluded that, that uh, Marina, his failure with his marriage was not the sole reason, not necessarily the sole reason, but uh, that was the last threat he had in Marina. And when she rejected him, uh, he had nothing. He hated his mother. He told the psychiatrist that she hated him and, and uh, he felt the same about her. So uh, it's, uh, I think he was just lashing out at society. But more, I'm, I'm a, a strong opinion that <coughs> had Marina come back to him, uh, he would not have shot the president. I think uh, he went to see her on Thursday and begged her to come back and she locked herself in her bedroom and rejected him and told him that uh, they were through. And the next morning, well, the, the next morning when he got up to leave, and she was in a separate part of the house, she wouldn't even talk to him. So he got up the next morning, left his wedding ring and most of the money he had on the dresser and went out and got his rifle and took it back to uh, the book depository and shot the president and Governor Connolly.